Well, it's me again. Start another work week, but work, if you still have a job, is pretty darn fluid, I'd say. Well, Monday's officially my day off, but what's a day off these days? Got plenty, sort of anyways. It's also officially two weeks of the voluntary national shutdown. So here it is on Monday, March 30th, 2020, new version of PK's PSA, a.k.a. Pastoral Service Announcement, coming to you almost live from Pastor Ken, that'd be me, in the sanctuary of all places, new creation, in still Chile, out of Ohio. As always, this PSA will be wrapped up in a few moments with, and now a word from our scriptures. It's actually, what I want to talk about today is an inherent part of life. I mean, been going on as long as I can remember. You know, and as bad as it can get in this country, I've been to some other places in the world, like Tanzania, for example, where it is, and no disrespect to the fine folks, some good friends that live there, worse there. I mean, we take it for granted. And though we might prefer otherwise, we even get used to it to a degree. It goes on more times than we can count, and sometimes we might even be actually counting while it's happening. We experience it when we drive to work most days, go to the grocery store, shopping center, even go out to eat. It happens in medical facilities, hospitals, doctor's offices, and, and emergency rooms. I mean, just this morning, I sent the dog out to get the newspaper out of that paper tube by the side of the road. She does that, you know, she's pretty talented. And in slight exasperation, it occurred once again for me as the tube was empty. Over 40 years ago, sitting on a couch in a rather romantic moment, I told this woman, I love you for the first time. She put me through it for several months after that. There are going to be people in our lives, close people, people we love, who are notorious for forcing us to endure this matter. I won't name names, but I know you probably can so much of our society in which we live is driven by the incessant need for less and less of this. Our tolerance for it continues to wane. We even go so far as to pay money, good money. I mean a lot of money so we don't have to put up with it. Some people can be sternly adamant about how they refuse to partake in this so-called fruitless endeavor. Our economy though it seems to have, in large part, almost ground to a halt, moves aggressively forward when this activity does not exist, or at least is minimized. Over time, we've generated enterprising ways to mitigate this problem. I mean, one of the benefits of such entities as Amazon Prime was supposed to terminate, or at least minimize this dilemma. But even those folks are becoming less than admirable in pulling it off. Though some would argue that it's sometimes a misnomer, we have fast food restaurants and quick in and out, drive through carryouts, suggesting that if we patronize those places, they will ensure against it. Nobody wants to get word from anybody about a delay, about a slowdown, about a hold up, or about a mess up. Heck, they even have a full-grown college diploma you can get on the subject to help producers and manufacturers and suppliers and other companies better deal with it. I think they call it something like logistics or chain management or something like that. Supply, who knows. Some people want to avoid this thing that I've been talking about, like the plague. Oop, did I just say plague? I can't believe I said that. Well, speaking of COVID-19, we all just got word, didn't we? In the last 24 hours, we're going to get another dose of it. It. Like it or not. Now, you probably figured out by now what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you had to wait for it, I know. What I'm talking about is waiting. Yeah, Waiting. We've been told we need to wait at least another month, end of April, they say. 
The numbers of infections and deaths have still been rising, but we are consistently being told for now that's the unenviable and inevitable scenario given the complex transmission of coronavirus. So we wait some more. We've been told to keep doing the thing we've done so much in our lives to avoid. Doing the thing that when it starts to pile on, it leads to frustration and exasperation. Let's face it, in large part, we hate to wait. To be sure, these days most of us are finding plenty of things to be doing while we wait. Some new things maybe, some things we should have been doing before but hadn't. Maybe this wait and put our hands in our pockets and we finally pulled out that ignored, nearly forgotten circular to it. We found our round to it. And so while we wait, we're getting round to it. Like cleaning out the house or painting that wall. And you know, maybe, just maybe, all this waiting isn't such a bad thing after all. Maybe there's a good side to it to be found. You know, you open up the pages of the Bible and you'll find the simple word wait showing up over a hundred times. Lots of waiting going on there, it seems, of no surprise, huh? Lots of regular waiting for things like Noah waiting for it to rain and Noah waiting for it to stop raining. Joseph waiting in prison, waiting for some battle, waiting to have a child, even waiting to know if Jesus was the one. But the most frequent use, it seems, is in the expression, get this, wait for the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Be still and wait patiently for God. God seems to take a different tact on, on waiting. Psalm 130 verse 5 puts it like this, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. Maybe God's even inviting us to appreciate the wait. To be sure we'll learn to wait and learn how to wait. You may know I have a book on my shelf from a, a Japanese theologian entitled The Three Mile an Hour God. In it he expounds devotionally about how it is that we walk at about that speed, three miles an hour. And God seems to as well. Never in a hurry. Slow even could say God does his best work in the slowness, in the patience, in the midst of the wait. The wait, when we slow down in these days, to not just do for God, but to be with God, is a good thing. Maybe you're learning to wait in prayer, wait on God in reading God's word, wait even in the silence. Wait on the Lord these days. It's a good thing. It's a, it's a God thing. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Until next time, remember, fear not tomorrow. God's already there. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay praying. And I might add today, stay waiting on the Lord. Stay faithful, my friends, and Christ be with you.